Hi everyone, my name's Mel and I am one of the keepers here at Taronga Western Plains Zoo looking after the African wild dog. And we're here at the front of the exhibit, uh, which is the first one on the circuit as you come to, through the zoo. Um, and today I'm going to share with you a couple of facts about this really unique species. So currently we have a pack of four females out on display. They're sisters and they were actually born here at Taronga Western Plains Zoo um, as a result of our regional breeding program. Wild dogs have this really unique pattern um, made up of tan, black and white. Um, each pattern for each dog is very different um, and it's actually what we use to identify help us identify them. Um, so we're either looking at their tail pattern, um, whether the pattern might be black, white, black, or if they have a splodge in their tail. Um, every unique, every pattern is unique um, to them. Uh, a lot of people get them mixed up with hyenas as well. Um, so they are uh, they do look, do look quite similar in terms of their coat pattern. That's one of the main things that people get confused. Um, but they're actually very, very different animals. So African wild dogs are part of the canine um, side of things. So they're on the canine branch, whereas hyenas have their own branch, which is actually more closely related to felines and mongoose. African wild dogs are social carnivores, um, so they do eat meat. Uh, and what they catch out on the hunt really depends on their pack size. So pack size can vary anywhere between 2 and 40, um, but typically it's anywhere between 10 and 15. Um, and that really is going to depend on um, how many they have out on the hunt and how successful they are at, um, at catching different prey. African wild dogs are really unique in terms of their social hierarchy. Typically a pack will be made up of the alpha pair, so a male and a female, and then their offspring. Um, so packs can vary between uh, members of two or possibly even up to 40 in a whole pack. Um, and then once they reach a certain point and offspring reach maturity, uh, it's typically the females that will actually break off from that, um, from that pack and go and form their own pack and they either will take over a different pack or they'll form their own pack by meeting up with some unrelated males. So African wild dogs have some very unique vocalizations. Um, some will include a rally call, uh, which is what they tend to do before they go out on a hunt, kind of jeez each other up um, to get them really excited and ready to go out hunting. Um, another one will be a location call. Um, so if they have lost members of the pack or if they've gotten split somehow, they'll uh, let out a really loud, unique location call um, and they can hear each other from kilometers away. Um, and then particularly when you do come here to the zoo uh, during feeding time you might hear some high-pitched squealing and that's really just them communicating to each other and working out their pecking order um, as to who gets the biggest bit when they're feeding. African wild dogs are actually the most effective hunters in all of Africa um, so typically you might think carnivores like lions or cheetah or hyena are actually quite successful uh, because they are large predators um, but typically they tend to only be successful about 30% of the time when they do go out on a hunt whereas African wild dogs when they are hunting as a pack 85% um, of the time they're actually coming home with something uh, and getting a really good meal out of it so that's why we do feed them every day here at the zoo um, it's because they would be feeding pretty much every day out in the wild as well. Uh, so African wild dogs have a really close-knit um, hierarchy and uh, social dynamic uh, which is interchanging all the time um, but as strict as it might be they do look after each other really well um, so when they do have any sick or injured dogs or any puppies as well what they'll actually do once they've finished a hunt is come back uh, to the den site where those dogs might be and they'll actually regurgitate their food for them and make sure that everybody gets a hot meal. Um, there have been stories of dogs being almost fatally injured by breaking a leg um, because uh, typically if you don't have a pack looking after you that means that you can't hunt if you're a carnivore um, and if you're a, a prey species that means that you can't run away from predators. Um, but African wild dogs because they're in a pack that's so tightly knit uh, they have others looking after them who bring them food and they've been able to make full recoveries. And so I hope you've learned a few cool facts about African wild dogs today. 
um, and when you do come and visit hopefully you can spend some time watching them and working out a few of their uh, very unique behaviours.